In the last few sessions, we've been looking at the megatrends, how the Affordable Care Act is going to make major changes on the health system. So we've seen how it's going to transform delivery of care to patients, how it's going to affect insurers and make them evolve, how it's going to affect employers and their offering of insurance. Today, we're going to look at how the Affordable Care Act and other factors are going to transform medical education and academic health centers that deliver medical training. Well, we've been training doctors essentially in the same way for 100 years. In 1910, the Flexner Report was published, and it transformed medical school training in a major way in this country, using the Johns Hopkins model for the whole country. It recommended that prospective medical students get scientific training in college, that in medical school they get two years of preclinical hard sciences, physiology, cell biology, and such. And then they get two years of clinical training, mostly on hospital wards. Well, over the subsequent hundred years, there's been very little evolution of this model. There's been some change in the process and teaching philosophy, a move from lectures to smaller groups and discussions, more patient simulations, introducing a student to a patient earlier in their medical school training. But I like to say that medical school education is probably the slowest evolving organism in the universe. Essentially, we're doing the same thing today as we were 100 years ago. Simultaneously with that medical education, there's been a growing emphasis on care in the hospital. Throughout the 20th century, the hospital has been the vanguard of health innovation. At the turn of the 20th century, the rise of antisepsis, anesthesia, radiology, the ability to culture bacteria, all led to hospitals becoming cleaner, safer, and places that the middle class and upper middle class were comfortable to go for care. The government then accelerated that process, providing substantial support for hospital construction and operations, and through its payment mechanisms in Medicare, uh, encouraging hospitals to expand and to add more uh, technology. The result is over time, an enormous increase in spending on hospital care. Today, we spend almost $1 trillion on hospitals. Well, partially because of the Affordable Care Act, but other factors in American society, academic health systems and medical education face a triple threat. When I was training, a triple threat was this doctor who was a fantastic diagnostician, wonderfully empathetic bedside manner, a scintillating lecturer to medical students and residents, and a world-leading researcher making breakthroughs and publishing important papers. Well, today the triple threat is very, very different. First, in the area of research, there is a flattening of funding and support for research. This graph, the blue dots, shows the NIH funding over time. And you can see it was going up at a steady clip until the end of the 1990s, when there was a big call to double the NIH budget. And Congress passed a doubling of the budget. That's in the yellow bar. But then, since that doubling, essentially support for biomedical research has remained flat. And because of healthcare inflation, that actually is a decline in real support for biomedical research. And as long as you look in the future, it's hard to see that there's going to be a big rise in government support for biomedical research. So academic health centers are facing a flattening or decline in support for their research mission. On the education side, training medical students has always been a money-losing proposition, which has been supported by medical schools from a variety of other sources. In addition, academic medical centers get funds from the government to pay for graduate medical education, that is training of interns, residents, fellows, and others. That's called GME. Well, the GME, which runs around $10 billion a year for Medicare, has been a target of federal budget cutters, and lots of proposals have been floated to reduce support for academic health centers through GME. And finally, with the relentless downward price pressure 
and the need for hospitals and health systems to be in the silver or bronze tier, margins, that is, the profit made on treating patients, is going to decline. And hospitals are going to be required to deliver care more cheaply, decreasing the amount of money they can take from patient care to support education and research. And large academic health care centers have been among the highest cost providers in this country. But they are going to see downward price pressure and have to actually become much more efficient. It's often been said that academic health care centers sit at a junction of industrial bloat and inefficiency. Over the last 20 years, it's been shown that productivity in the American economy has dramatically improved. Productivity has increased in manufacturing, it's increased in retail sales, it's increased in the financial services sector. The only two sectors that have seen declines in productivity have been medicine and education. And so academic health centers have a double whammy. And so they need to transform how they deliver their education and clinical care. Otherwise, they're going to be cut out of the silver and bronze tier and lose patients and be under serious financial threat. Next, we're going to look at how they can respond to this challenge and do all the things they do well. Provide great patient care, do research, and teach the next generation of healthcare providers. Thank you.